Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I'm not sure what that was. It was a sound, an exhalation sound. So I don't know, I'm not sure what day it is. I think it's the 4th of September. And the last time I recorded one of these was the 1st. So it's three days ago. Which, in reality, isn't a long time. But, for some reason, it seems like ages ago. That's weird, isn't it? So... (sighs) One forty a.m. I'm recording this, so there's a couple of things a little bit different. Um, I've got the windows open wide in the living room, so I'm sitting in my big black squeaky chair. I've got the laptop uh, going. It's not going anywhere, it's there, it's on. It's uh it's basically doing my bidding. It's working for me. I've got the TV on mute with some kind of screen saver going on. And you could possibly hear there's a sound of the train in the background. And sometimes they let the horn off. Sometimes the trains get the yawn. They're like really it's quite loud. Don't do it during the day. So, yeah, but thankfully they haven't done it. Um, I suppose at this time of the night it's more like freights, you know. Uh, trains with what do they call them, you know, like those containers that you have on ships and they travel all through the country on trains at night and during the day as well, sometimes as well, I think. So, the reason I've got my windows open is because I put some flea powder, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? Sounds like I live in a some kind of disgusting place, but I don't. It's quite nice. Just unfortunately, Andre managed to catch some fleas, and I took him to the vet two weeks ago, and he had um, like a this capsule of liquid put onto the back of his neck, and he's due another one in two weeks time but the thing is the fleas only it's only if they bite him that they that it affects the flea so if the flea is happy just to it's, it's almost like the fleas of you he's like a beach to them they're just sunbathing they're not you know they're not doing anything they're just having a little holiday but there's not many on him. There's only like one or two. And he's covered in bites where he's been bitten by them. And, and when he gets bitten, the flea gets poisoned and stuff. Um, but I thought they'd be gone. I mean, I washed this carpet. 
with the I've got this carpet washer it's a carpet cleaner a vax so I spent money a few months back I'm still paying for it actually and it's pretty good it really sort of does clean the carpet quite well but it doesn't seem to do the job with fleas they seem to be they have the seem to be have their own little um I don't know, I think they could probably survive a nuclear war. But not this special powder that I put down. So it was basically I don't know if you ever you might not have had this in other countries, but in England it might still be around, I don't know. But it used to be a thing called shake and fac. So you'd shake this uh, lovely smelling powder it's like talcum powder onto the floor and then you'd vacuum it up you'd leave it on there for I don't know 20 minutes or whatever and you'd vacuum it up and it would leave the carpet all clean, you know smelling lovely you know you almost just want to lick the carpet but don't don't do that and I this is what this is basically it was shake shake it onto the carpet and then leave it for at least half an hour and then vacuum and then empty the vacuum cleaner so that's what I did I shook I covered most of the living room uh, three quarters of the living room and mainly the area that he sleeps I kept him in the bedroom with me. I closed the living room door. I opened the windows, so because I didn't really want to be breathing that stuff in, so I let some air in. And I went and laid down on the bed and I fell asleep for a couple of hours. So I came in and vacuumed it all up. And I, I closed the windows and I I really felt it like I really like I was breathing in the the fumes of it so I've had to leave the windows open for the last probably six seven hours hence them being open now and it's a little bit it's not cold but it's it's like jumper weather I'm, I don't mean jumping up and down uh, like cardigan you know so I'm kind of keeping warm but I'm okay it's not cold it's not warm it's just kind of neutral yeah neutral kind of temperature yeah so I did the carpet I washed all his like bedding in his bag again and the things that he sort of sleeps in so I put all that in the, the washing machine so hopefully that will be that will dry off by tomorrow and then I'm hoping that he's going to be okay. I gave him a bath as well. And I feel so guilty. Because it's the one thing he doesn't like. It's not the only thing he doesn't like. I'm sure there's lots of things he doesn't like. He just doesn't tell me about it. But it's the thing that he really, really dislikes. It's the only thing that he's scared of. Apart from he reacts to really loud sounds. For example, a motorbike. You know those, you know people have those motorbikes that crackle. Like they really like, they sound like they've got something wrong with them. They sound like they're breaking. They're like the yeah it sounds almost like a really loud version of a 
of a teenage boy whose voice is breaking. Like, <laughs> this wasn't a good impression, but it's very loud. And um, he doesn't really like that. It makes him jump. So, I ran a bath. I don't don't have to have much water in there. I don't have it full. I don't have it so... I have it so he can touch the ground. Not the ground. The bath. You have to have very long legs to touch the ground and be in the bath at the same time. It's not a spider ferret. Or a kangaroo ferret. Or... Not a hippopotamus, not a zebra, giraffe, a giraffe ferret. So you got long legs, aren't they? Anyway, that'd be a weird mixture. Imagine a giraffe ferret. If there was such a thing as a giraffe ferret, that would be it. Be the king of the of the world, animal wise. It would no animal would be able to touch it. Literally, it would be so tall. So those big legs, and then a, a head. If his head was the side of a giraffe's head, he'd have a jaw that was more powerful, way more powerful than a shark, way more powerful than a lion or a crocodile. He's got one of the strongest jaws in the animal kingdom for his size. So if he was a lot bigger. Apparently, if he was the size of a shark, he'd have a 20 times more powerful jaw. Of course, how does anyone really know that? It's all guessing, and it is, and it's all guesswork. It's all guessing and guessing, that's what I say. But he, um, I felt I felt a bit bad, though, because he was asleep on my bed. And it was really comfy. And you might be thinking, he's got fleas, what's he doing in your bed? Yeah, that's, that is a good point. But, um, he hasn't really got fleas, but he has. It's kind of a, it's a weird one, if that makes sense. They're not, they're not like just jumping all around the place. There's just a couple enough. <laughs> Unless I'm just lying to myself anyway I picked him up and I kind of woke him up gently like I shook him and I didn't shake him and chucked a bucket of water over him no I didn't I didn't do that why am I saying that that would just make the bed west all messy so I carried him into the bath room and it was a bit weird really because I was talking to him and saying okay baby I'm just going to give you a bath and I was just like being really gentle with him trying to just you know show him the bath and hold him the hands and you know give him kisses and just say look it's okay it's just a little bit of water it was uh, lukewarm it wasn't uh, wasn't hot it wasn't cold it was just an okay temperature you know and I had the shampoo already because I got a special ferret shampoo and I was just like come on and he, and he started he started grabbing at me to get away because he knew he knew I was going to put him in the bath, but and I was trying to calm him down because I don't want him to think of it as a, a horrible experience. I want him to enjoy, well, not enjoy it, but I'd like him to enjoy it because if he did like baths, I'd get in the bath with him, and we could have baths and play with rubber ducks and you know sink ships and fart and you know that kind of stuff, but. 
he yeah he doesn't doesn't like it I'd love to be able to just play with him in the, in the bath and because they're brilliant swimmers he's got webbed feet for goodness sake He's built to swim. He's an expert swimmer. Perfect swimmer. Basically, he's an otter. You've got otter feet. Little lot of little webbed feet. He doesn't like baths. So I, I put him into it gently. Really gently. I said, it's okay. It's just like really like little baby steps. Even though he's had a, he's had plenty of baths in the past, I just I just wanted to be gentle with him, you know. I wanted him to to just be okay with it, and I kept giving him kisses, picking him up, giving him kisses, and then got put him down, and he'd pick it up whenever he looked a little bit like panicky. I I pick him up so he could see me, so he could look into my eyes. Which probably scared them even more, didn't it? But yeah, I just kind of just like, look, I'm here. It's, it's fine, baby. It's okay. And, you know, I just put the water over. I always make sure the water doesn't go in his eyes. Shampoo doesn't go in his eyes. I don't wash any further than the top of his head down to his neck. And then further up. I never go any, I never go anywhere near his eyes, I don't really touch his ears and I just made sure that I kind of washed every single part of him and with the shampoo and then I had to rinse it off again which takes a while and he seemed better this time than previous he didn't seem quite so affected by it but he had a good wash and he's very dirty he's always he's always running around and rolling around in mud and whatever he can when we're out and that's the only reason he got fleas in the first place because I take him out he got them from probably from the grass or something uh, or maybe he was rolling around near a hedgehog I take him out at night sometimes and I can't see what he's doing really. He keeps going to the. He goes to kind of the same places. So he might. He might have a hedgehog girlfriend that I don't know about, and I'm just standing there while he's playing around in the bushes. But he might be making out with uh, Henrietta, the hedgehog. Who knows? I mean, you know, kids don't tell their parents everything, do they? So. And the amount of fleas that came off of him in the bath was so small amount. It's really, and they do come out with water. They come out when you do that. But uh, so I dried him off. I put him in the towel and I just held him. I just gave him a big hug and kisses again. Just tried to get him to look at me, just to calm down. And it was like making weird noises and like that. But it was different to that. But and I just like, come on, baby, come on, baby, just calm down, calm down, calm down. And I gave him a good old rub and made him as dry as I could. And then he gets down and he's just rubbed himself over the carpet and not over everything I think it's partly to dry himself off but also partly because he wants to get dirty again as soon as possible it's a it's a weird weird little boy he is and now he's he's asleep in my bed again he looked very happy I just uh, I didn't know where he was so I just went in there and pulled back the quilt and he's like tucked in lying on his back curled up but on his back 
with his little tongue sticking out he's happy so I just like okay cool I gave him a kiss and just left him alone turned the light off and that's that's what I really want is for him to be happy because it's kind of kind of set that as my as the probably the most important thing to make sure that he's well and he's happy and he's healthy and he is healthy the vet said that he was very healthy he gets lots of exercise he eats well he gets lots of cuddles I massage him every day to get lots of massages and um and I think love is healing as well. And it just if you show love to someone, it heals. It's yeah, I think it has to. I'm not talking about unrequented love. Uh, that's a different kind. <laughs> that's a different thing, you know. This this man he keeps telling me he loves me. He won't leave me alone. I don't like it but suddenly I feel really healed oh, my legs healed up it's weird but I wish you'd leave me alone my sciatica doesn't hurt anymore oh I'm oh, confused so yeah um, oh, a new thing he's doing at the moment is I might have mentioned this but he scratches at the he's got this like little catch scratcher thing well it's quite big actually but he sleeps in it sometimes and now he scratches it late at night and when I get up and I tell him off and he looks at me and carries on doing it and I get up and he runs into the kitchen and hides behind the behind the cooker because it's a game he turns it he's turned it into a game so now when he wants me to play and chase him around he starts doing that starts scratching and he's only only just realized really recently that that's what he was doing like last night I was sitting in this chair And I think I was watching telly, or I might have been just sitting here with my eyes closed. I don't know, possibly. I didn't write down in my diary that particular event. And I hear this scratching at the, the thing that he's doing. And I watch him. I'm not, I don't think he knows that I'm here. He might think I'm in the bedroom because sometimes he's not always like clued up where I am. But I watch him when well, he did know I was here because I look over like with my peripherals. I didn't look right at him, and I see that he stops doing it, and he just stares at me, just stops, turns around, stares at me, like as if he's expecting me to do something. And then he goes back scratching it again and stops and stares at me. It's like this, what do you do with that? And he does it early hours of the morning, like th three o'clock in the morning. And everything sounds magnified, aren't they? Late at night, just everything seems a little bit louder, a little bit. I don't know about you but I always, I always find that whenever I try and be quiet I seem to make more noise mind you it is hard to it is hard to vacuum vacuum the carpet quietly perhaps I should try and do that just during the day hey hey eh? 
did some washing up today as well. I didn't, I know this is a sleep session, but, or a boring session. I think I live up to the name, the boring part. The thing is, last night, I offered to look after my friend's dog during the day. And I said, oh, I'll probably be up. To, uh, you know, he's going to, I think he was going to come about 8 o'clock I said that's fine either I'll still be up or I'll just get up and go back to bed it didn't work that way um, he came and I didn't get any sleep at all I got probably 2 hours sleep before before 8 Five to eight or six to eight, something like that. And I just felt a bit tired all day. And I took him out about three times so we could do a wee. And I have to keep him away from Andre. I have to keep them separate. So Andre was in the bedroom. He was in the living room with me. The original plan was I was going to have him in the bedroom with me. And Andre was going to be in the, in the living room. But that plan kind of didn't work out. And... I have to keep them separate because Andre bites him. Andre, and this is a big dog. This is a, a proper, you know, it's really, really, really strong dog. I mean, the other, I was walking with him and he's got a habit of just stopping and smelling the grass. And like any dog, really, sometimes he'd do it, but he'd keep walking. Well, earlier on, he did it, and he didn't. And I kept walking, and he just stood still. And I realised, now, after a few seconds, I really, I thought, oh, where's my arm gone? And it's like, I basically pulled my arm out of the socket. He's so strong. I'm walking down there with, with, with no arm. Believe it, oh, not again. Because I'm used to Andre, but he's because he's so little, he doesn't pull me around, you know, he doesn't have the, the physical strength to do that. Thankfully, if he did, oh, oh, well, that'd be that'd be, oh, you know, what I mean, oh, so. That's kind of what I did today. Yesterday, all my troubles, <laughs> all my troubles sitting so far away. Yesterday, last night, the day before, uh, yesterday, well, uh, yeah, but it was yesterday, probably early hours of the morning. I decided to pay for just one website hosting just for my jasonnewland.com because I just realised that I need to have at least one website and that jasonnewland.com is how I've been starting my recordings and videos since 2006. Always started with, hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. Or used to be www.jasonnewland.com. So it's a place for people to go to if you need to contact me or want to you know 
send me a gift or want to uh, look at my back catalogue and see my stuff or keep updated on the new stuff I'm doing and you know just like a place where everything's there like the kind of like my online home I, I guess yeah and I haven't really had it up and running as a like a normal website for a long time I had a Shopify which was costing me £35 a month and that was my website was that and the domain name was directed to there but I don't sell anything and I had all these all of my recordings available to download free and no one was doing it because everyone's just seem to just listen to them on the podcast or the podcasts which admittedly is easier so what I do I listen to stuff on podcasts I don't download anything really unless I'm going to listen to it later offline but if I listen to stuff at home I've got the broadband internet and I just listen I just stream everything really although that's not completely true I've got some audio books that I've downloaded from uh, Audible and was it The Power of Thinking Big I think is the one I'm reading or listening to at the moment I listened to it yesterday or earlier today and really into listening to positive audio books and listening you know watching uh, for me it's not so much the motivational rather than the inspirational I like kind of that mixture so there's a lot of uh, people that I like to listen to and I'm discovering new people you know as I go by as I go through it so you know, Zig Ziglar there's uh, it was Anthony Robbins of course but there's Bob Proctor and my favourite one is my favourite one used to be Zig Ziglar I used to listen to him 20 years ago that's when I discovered him and very motivational funny quick very positive but I think what it is with positivity and positive thinking I didn't understand it until recently and the likes of Bob Proctor and well, as, let's say him for, for a, he's a big a great example to explain who really in depth explains it and uh, I've forgotten his name Jim, Jim, Rains, Haynes, Baines. Oh, I forgot his name, it's terrible, isn't it? But he's this other bloke, this man, he's American. He's no longer with us, but he's, he's Rain, Reen, Beam, Rain, Jim Rain, something like that. Brilliant. 
was it? Rune. Ron? Reen? Oh. That'll bug me now. Jim. Haynes. Is it Hain? He's brilliant. I mean, like on a level of brilliance that I can't really express because he explains things he explains it well he explains it in a way that I understand I suppose it's, it's we're all different aren't we but I like to see things from a different angles and uh, get more of a perspective I suppose of what something actually means Jim R Roan Jim Roan so his name's Roan I think it's Jim or is it Bobby Bobby Roan Jim Roan I think it's Jim Roan R-O-H-N phenomenal speaker and he's got a way of talking that's really funny as well he's like he stresses certain words but um, so I've been listening to a lot of that and then I'm quite I like to go back to do the actual sources I don't mean like ketchup and uh, salad cream I mean I like to I'll give you an example. I read a book that talked about Fritz Pearls. So that, for me, that's interesting. I watched a video about Fritz Pearls and how, you know, because it was connected to uh, NLP. And I thought, I want to actually... I don't want to hear well, I don't mind hearing what somebody else's opinion is of what someone else said I want to read it for myself I want to read the words of the person myself because I'm quite capable of comprehending what they said and understanding it in my own way I get, you know I suppose so that's what I did. Fritz Pearls, uh, Carl Rogers. I was reading books that Carl Rogers wrote uh, long, long before I even thought about becoming a counsellor. I had no intention of becoming a counsellor back in 99, 2000. In 2007, that's when I started thinking you know, sort of probably the beginning of 2007 I started looking around at the people that I was volunteering with and they were getting paid and they were counsellors and it dawned on me that they were they were really nice people and they were helping people they were making a huge difference to people's lives so I thought oh I might give that a go and I kind of sparked a little it wasn't so much um, I was already interested in therapy but I'm, I wasn't I didn't I wasn't interested in helping people with therapy at that time because at that time uh, before that I mean I was in 2006 and 2004 but before 2004 I, I was just reading and studying for the fun of it for the interest so I was reading therapy books I, I remember sitting in 2003 I think it was and I was sitting in up in bed 
I didn't have that was there was a I think it was like a studio apartment I was living in so I didn't have a settee or anything well I could have got one I suppose but I just had a bed that I, that I sat in and I was reading a Carl Rogers book and I had a few of his books but there was this specific one I think I've got it as well I, I re-bought it so I've got one, two, three, four, five five Carl Rogers books and a couple of books about him and I had no interest in being a counsellor so yeah for some I was just I was fascinated because he was kind of one of the kind of class as one of the, the greats as far as being a genuine beautiful person and yeah I kind of and I ended up studying person centred counselling which is based on his you know person centred or clients client based uh, therapy so I ended up going to university and studying for the first two years based on you know the counselling part of it was based on Carl Rogers and his theory as well as you know looking at other theories and other uh, techniques and then the final year was the dissertation and the degree part you know so that's more a bit more academic but uh I suppose I kind of wanted to be like him but as a person not as a therapist but as a person to get to know myself and to be I don't know to be congruent within myself not necessarily with other people but just within myself so that I can so I can know what, what's going on within me and uh, Carl Rogers is very much about congruence and being in touch with how you are but also Fritz Pearls was as well Fritz Pearl was very much uh, I mean it's so you can hear that background sound of the trains again I couldn't I couldn't close the windows because of the, uh, the, the pa all the powder that had been on the floor I vacuumed it up but it was still in the air, you know. And Fritz Pearls was kind of so focused on everything that a person did in therapy. It's like, you know, everything. What you said, what you did, why you moved your hand that way, and the incongruence continuously uh, challenging the incongruence of a person and it looked like really like be a very uncomfortable session to be with someone that did that but the man was a genius you know he there's there's lots of geniuses on there. It's just it was amazing. 
And I just love studying Milton Erickson and hypnosis and his ways of doing it. So I wanted to absorb it. I wanted it to be part of me. Where. I just did it. Without doing it. It's kind of like. It's like wearing the most expensive suit. But it's on the inside. That doesn't make any sense, does it? But it's like knowing it's there, it's but purse. No, that's, that's a really crappy analogy. Sorry about that. I'll take that back. It's like an Easter egg covered in baked beans. No, it's nothing like that. I just think that what we put in integrates so knowledge new new knowledge integrates and that fits very well with Jim Rohn and Bob Proctor and the you know positivity is what we focus on we become what we think about you know that kind of stuff for things to change for you you've got to change these things that maybe 20 years ago was just like a little sound bite and now with so much information available all these talks by these great people that are available for free on YouTube you know so many that I never actually I never be able to watch them all never be able to listen to all of them because there's so many and I just feel really lucky sometimes because 20 years ago I had to buy everything I had to buy a, an audio a tape CD uh, of an audio book or you know uh, motivational talk inspirational talk and it would cost you know a fair bit of money and I had quite a nice collection of tapes I had quite a big collection in what, at one point and I listened to all of them was it um, Dr. Vincent Peale see I I read his book and I listened to his audio all those years ago and I don't think I understood it. I gen genuinely don't think I understood where he was coming from. And I, I saw him do a, I think it was probably about a 40 minute talk. It's on YouTube and it's in a church because he was a reverend. And he was. I think he was about 80 years old then or something like that and the passion in his voice and the things that he was saying you know I suppose seeing him in the flesh as it were made him more real than reading a book because when I, when I see in him 
and hearing him, I could see that he was completely, completely believed what he was saying. And he'd lived it, he'd lived, he wrote the book like 50 years ago, and he's still traveling around the world telling his story and, you know, preaching the word of positivity. And that's just, I think it's amazing. And I kind of, kind of like to do something like that, maybe. I don't know about traveling the world, but yeah, maybe. So what I've been doing is I've been transcribing, and I mentioned this in you know, previous recordings, I've been transcribing my back catalogue of podcasts. And I've just reached the 100 mark of the Let Me Boy to Sleep, so I'm now transcribing 101. So, so far I've done about probably nearly 200 altogether. And it's just the first part of the transcribing and it takes a while but um, Now that I've got past that mark, I realise that it's it's doable. And then the the work really starts when I when I start to listen to them and edit it and you know correct the words and the spelling and put it into a readable format. You know, sentences and paragraphs and such alike. But just skimming through it, I'm amazed at how how accurate a lot of the transcriptions are. I'm also kind of surprised at how much there is, how much talking there is. And I know that with the let me bore you to sleep, a lot of it is just, just silliness. But with some of the other stuff I've done in the past, there might be some bits of gold there, you know, something that I can work on uh, to produce a book. So now that I've been working on the website and there's still lots to do on there but because it's just one website I can I can relax with it. You know, I can I'm working on cause I've got categories and I'm trying to put each podcast on there and put each episode on so people can whoever can uh stream or download each individual session. So it's going to be, it's, it's definitely a process. And it's going to take a while to do it. But what I'm planning, especially with some of the shorter recordings is transcribe them and then do the editing part of it and then put that onto the website as well so for people to read it if they wish or at least
least have a summary you know an abridged version of the transcript and I can do that on the website and maybe I could put them I can do that on a podcast as well possibly and actually add the transcript or a summary so yeah I'm fairly pleased with how the website's coming along it's all basic I like basic stuff I like it um, for me content is more important than it being pretty although there's nothing wrong with being, it being pretty and I just want because of the amount of work that I have I'd like it to be just nicely organised so that it's easy to find not just the back catalogue of recordings I've done but also future ones I'd like it to all be easily findable so I'm fairly pleased I've got there's the home page which is the first page I've got a contact page which you can contact me by basically all my contact details on there you can contact me by post by email so you've got my telephone number on there uh, there's you can contact me by filling in the form on the page as well there's an about me page and that's it's just a, a little write up about me about you know having gotten involved in hypnosis in 1998 and then you know progressing from there and then starting the free hypnosis service online in 2006 it's a very basic summary and then there is what's the other page oh on my front page on the home page on the right hand side and this is probably more for people on laptops and tablets rather than iPhones or you know mobile phones Androids uh, there's my contact details again on the first page as well as the Facebook link Twitter uh, the link for my Amazon wish list there's the link for YouTube and a link for WhatsApp and a link for Skype that's it and there's categories as well there's all the categories are also on the right hand side as well as having their own page also so yeah that's another page categories and then there's another page called what was it called gift me so that's for people that want to send me a gift uh, some people do ask if they can if they'd like to show their appreciation so what I've done is I've made a list of different ways which you can send me a gift 
so there's the PayPal link there is what's the other one there's my Amazon wish list which is just books there's just books on there there's nothing else on the wish list but books I love my books and the I'm trying to think what else there's a one where there's a prepaid credit card like a MasterCard I had someone do that one a couple of times in the past um, then there is gift cards so there's the Amazon gift card which you can send to me in the post or you can you know, send uh, an email gift card and then I thought some things would be useful like f to be able to help me with my groceries and just you know general living expenses and shopping and that I mean I haven't actually been able to buy any new clothes for but I can't remember the last time I bought the last time I bought new clothes was two years ago I think that was a pair of trousers oh no I bought some shoes about six months ago so I don't you know don't get to buy uh, clothes very often so that would be quite nice to get some help with that uh, so I can just dress a bit nicer especially with winter coming up and perhaps needing a, some winter boots and you know just to wrap up in that so I put a list of uh, stores that I can get gift cards for and the first five are supermarkets and then there's some uh, clothes shops and and stuff like that coffee coffee place so you can get you can purchase gift cards online and then just get them sent to my postal address and then there's I think three websites that are dedicated to uh producing vouchers and gift cards that can be used in a lot of the major retail stores in the UK so I've listed those as well so it just gives those that are interested in helping me out uh, a few you know options a few ideas and um, So that I can get myself some, you know, go and buy some food or go and buy some clothes just as a gift. It's not, it's not a donation. It's not, not asking for anything. Just if someone wants to do that, then it's a beautiful thing and I appreciate it. That's groovy. And, uh, yeah. And any any money that comes through PayPal, I just put that towards the cost of running this free service, which is reduced in cost. So I've got rid of a few bits, but it's still costing me. 30, 40, 50, about 60 pound a month. That might go up if I do decide to get, you know, get some more websites. But as it is, I need to save up and get <clears throat> an SL, SSL certificate for my website. Because apparently without the SSL certificate Google 
um, possibly won't list it or won't uh, pay much attention to it even though I'm not selling anything so what I do is for free so that's going to cost me £140 for the year which means I'm going to have to save up for that but I'm in no hurry for that really not So, I could so easily just fall asleep, really, honestly. <sighs> oh. Sometimes I struggle to balance. I don't mean like balance physically, um, I mean. If I'm building a website, I seem to get a little bit focused. Well, a lot focused. And the thing is with the website, it's never going to be finished because of the nature of what I do. Because I'm always creating new stuff. I'm always thinking of uh, additional things I can add to the website which takes me away from the process of recording new sessions so I need to balance it so that I'm doing both because I, I want to be able to I really wanted to make three recordings a day I'm overdue making the sleep hypnosis weekly I'm getting on to two weeks since I last did the the last one for that. So I need, you know, and I don't have to do any of this, but I do, I want to, and I want to keep the momentum up. Yay. Oh, yes. So I'm going to go I hope I've been boring enough for you. I've nearly, f nearly, nearly sent myself to sleep. I gen genuinely could just stop talking and And you'd start to hear me snoring, which would be, well, it might be funny, I don't know. So I'm going to go and I will speak to you very, very soon. Please remember to be kind to yourself lots of love